what's going on? I'm asking you a question. You know what? Forget it. Today's uh, <laughs> <laughs> today's episode is uh, rated five stars. Not today's episode. Probably the previous episode. Shut the fuck up and let me do my goddamn shit, boy. <laughs> this is the Misfits Podcast. Obviously, you clicked on it. Uh, rated five stars on iTunes by Milk Boy McGee. He mm. says, what if you had a superpower to teleport wherever you looked, but you had a really ri- uh, lazy eye? And I would just wear an eye patch on one eye, and then I would look at the moon with a spacesuit on and go to the moon, and then I would look at Mars through a telescope and then go th- go to Mars. Oh, yeah? How are you going to breathe? With, a, with my spacesuit. Fuck. <laughs> Joined today by Toby. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and, of course, Swagger Soul, Spaceman himself. Hello. How are you? So I, you, I like space a lot. Yeah. Do you have a spacesuit? Uh, I, I wish. I have a fucking off-white Flight soon. Flex. Mm. That's about it. You know, I was listening to on the way here uh, the LSD episode of mm. the podcast right. from way back. Great episode. Really would recommend uh, listening to that if you haven't. From back when we were entertaining. Back when we were. <laughs> yikes. Jesus dude. Christ. We're still entertaining. We're just going through a rocky patch. Yeah, a little rough Midlife edge. crisis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we really have been through a bit of a midlife crisis this year, haven't we? Um, obviously, guys, recently what happened is the podcast channel on YouTube got. Uh, terminated terminated uh completely deleted it's it just came back today but it was down for like fucking four days yeah uh it was, it was funny when that broke i was at ryan's house in their land garage uh smoking weed and playing age of empires and then all of a sudden uh, ryan goes uh yeah the podcast account is gone and i was like huh he goes it's gone it's been terminated and yeah. i was like okay is that a mistake and he goes i think so and then we were just like, oh, <laughs> okay. And so we just messaged the guys over at Omnia and they sorted it out. Yeah. But it was weird. Apparently it was a bug. A bunch of other channels got terminated as yeah, well along like with a it. a handful of channels got fucked up by whatever this happened. It's kind of weird that that can just happen to YouTubers. Yeah, it was really weird because, you know, the reason it gave for the termination in the emails to the to the, to the the actual gmail it was attached to and when you went on to it when you were logged in it said that it was terminated due to uh, an impersonation complaint yeah so somebody you know we had figured that maybe somebody had uh, falsely filed a impersonation report you know who it was who it was that motherfucker joe rogan you reckon <laughs> yeah yeah he keeps dming me on twitter he's like hey man <laughs> now <laughs> so he's I'm... actually gonna bring us down <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, we really so don't know. He said it's entirely possible. He said it's entirely possible you're a douchebag, bro. <laughs> kind of whack your copy of me doing a podcast like that. Uh, no. Uh, Have you ever tried elk meat? Dude, I heard that it's like makes you at least 10% more alpha. Bro. I got to be real with you. There's something amazing about hunting uh, <laughs> your own prey and then cooking your own food. There, it, it's just a, a mind-blowing experience. Yeah. Like, like fucking... Like, I'm high as shit right now. <laughs> when I'm in the woods, I usually take three mushrooms, lace them up, roll them up with a gr- about a fucking gram of reefer, pack it in really nice and tight, light that shit up, and then burn it like incense. And then I just go out and I shoot whatever I see. You seen that video of that monkey you turn apart that gazelle? Can you Jamie. ask young Jamie to bring that up, <laughs> Pull please? Up real quick. Sorry, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> now we're actually going to get yeah, terminated. Literally going to get terminated. Uh, was that Alex Jones, by the way, you were doing? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like somebody. The, it was just something. <laughs> crazy. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that happened. We're back now. Uh, we're here. Last week, obviously, we had the whole squad on. We had Mason and Jay, which is lovely. Mm-hmm. Today, we're back to... Uh, Speaking three of Mason and Jay. Oh, yeah, true. They're, uh, they're pop figurines, not pop, U2s. U2s. They're, their vinyl figurines are still on the site. They're almost sold out. Uh, if you guys want to, uh, check them out. Go to U2s.com and uh, maybe pick them up before they're fucking gone forever. Yeah, get yourself some yeah. more collectibles. They're not bad. They're very nice. Uh, they are very, very nice. Look at us plugging for them, even though they didn't fucking show up. I best. don't think they were here for either of the plugs. No, no, no. no they, they, were here were, they were here last week, oh, which, yeah. was, which okay. was fair enough. Either way, uh, yeah, we're here now. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're back. We're the back. podcast is back, and it feels goddamn good to be back. Toby, what the fuck is that disgusting bottle of juice on the desk? Well, in the Patreon pre-show, which, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, 30 minutes, basically, kind of, sometimes. Yeah, a little pre-show for Extra the Extra content for patrons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just decided to... 
we were talking about the fact that Ryan, when we were having a meeting earlier this week, got us a bunch of Skittles, insisted that we had a bunch of Skittles and Voss waters. And I was like, what but, if I just mix them together? Okay, first of all, you know why he got Skittles and Voss water, right? I know. No. Were you there right. for that meeting in no, LA? He wasn't. Oh, well, what happened is we had this meeting in LA with uh, an agency, uh, which we can't go into too much. But like, basically, they wanted to work with us quite badly mm -hmm. and so we figured we could ask for some pretty crazy shit yeah because they were <laughs> Cause they, we had they, leverage yeah because well they were asking like you know is there anything you want us to do like any special requests and we were like oh shit oh this is awesome so we we thought about it for a while uh ryan originally settled with yeah we'll we'll get a bunch of voss water glass voss water and we'll go for a bunch of Skittles, but only red Skittles. Yeah. So we'll make them really? we wanted all of the red Skittles Voss out. Voss water and a big bowl of just red Skittles. Yeah, but but eventually what happened was we were like, that's a little bit too mean. And I was asking a little bit too much. We'll just turn, you know, look like assholes. Mm. So we were like, just Voss waters and just Skittles. And they fucking delivered. It was a lot of Skittles and a lot of Voss water. It was pretty awesome. And Mason just chomped on those Skittles the entire meeting. Everybody didn't pay attention did. at all. Literally everybody. So that's so why. it's like a ritual. It's a ritual now. Okay. I mean, it's a meme. Like, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. we don't it's actually just, care if we have Voss water because it just tastes inside, like fucking water. It's just an inside joke. For people who don't know, Voss My, water is just uh, expensive water for it's, rich you know, people. It's it's um, artesian. Artesian. It's artesian water. From Sweden, I, th I believe. Or is it sw Swiss? I don't know. Either way, apparently, it's very fancy. My uh, my Norway. brother. Norway. There you when go. We were, when he was doing a festival once in, um, in somewhere in, old, in, in New Zealand... Uh, they, they get they get a rider obviously for their green room. Mm -hmm. Basically, a rider for anyone who doesn't know is uh, when you're a musician playing a festival or a show or something. The uh, people that own the the show or whatever, well, you can request things and they'll leave them there for you. Yeah, in your little backstage area. But my brother was like, let's just see what we can do. So he asked for like raw mincemeat <laughs> and fried chicken. Mm -hmm. And they got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm sure that celebrities have some crazy fucking like requests that they put yeah. through. They're like pre-show rituals. Where it's like, I need a pack of Mentos, but uh, <laughs> with all the flavor removed from them. I need a pack of Mentos, all of them which have been sanded <laughs> down to a fine mist. I want a, <laughs> I want a whole packet of Tic Tacs which has been individually licked by Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> I want Lily Allen's breast milk. <laughs> the fuck <laughs> that's a reference to an old urban legend oh yeah there was right. there was a uh supposedly there was this hotel in london that was so had such a good concierge they would get you anything oh. and apparently some rich dude went there and said i want lily allen's breast milk and supposedly they got it for him i wonder how much that fucking cost <laughs> it, was just, it, was, it was just fucking skim milk with with a thing that said lily allen's breast milk on it maybe it was just like this will do i wonder if it makes things taste better what breast milk no, Lily Allen's breast milk. Oh. Well, I heard, who is she? <laughs> She's, She's a, singer. a musician. Really? Yeah. What does she do? What's, what's one of her top songs? Fuck you. Fuck you very, very much. Uh, she, yeah, Lily Allen. She's, is she from the UK? Yeah. She, yeah. Very poppy. Uh, She's delicious like, breast milk. She's I've like heard. poppy, but <laughs> kind of like refreshing. Not stereotypical poppy, I guess. Are you a fan? I like her. Would you mm. drink her breast milk? Oh, I mean, I'd drink anything she secretes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, anyway, why did you put the Skittles in the thing, in the Voss water? Uh, just <laughs> just see what happens. Well, I mean, you know, uh, some people put Skittles in vodka to flavor the vodka. So I'll see what it tastes like with the water. I figured, I figured that your idea was you're going to have all these multicolored Skittles sitting at the bottom, and then each color is going to individually rise and make this beautiful little cup. But I uh, just ended up turning into like what it's looks disgusting. like what looks like vomit and piss Th together. Yeah. Mm. And there's a layer of this weird, white. solid, foamy <laughs> stuff. This it's white gonna... skim. And when you drink it, it it, it like rubs against your. T it's disgusting. Mm. It's like pulp. I see. <laughs> it's Skittle pulp. Yeah. Fuck yeah, it's healthy. Drink the rainbow, Toby. It looks <laughs> gross too. You could you could literally <laughs> give that to someone and go, "Hey, want some OJ?" And they'd be like, "All right." And they'd fucking drink it and be like, "What the fuck?" Kind of uh, tastes like orange the, juice. Though. Are you sure? That is horrific. No, no, no. I, 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 it initially tastes like orange juice. And then you are greeted with an aftertaste, which is just a variety of mm -hmm. Skittles flavors. Anyway, guys. Another thing to mention, 
Uh, Patreon, uh, the employee of the month is now open. We are going to have to retire Queen Molly until mm. uh, we find a new person. Well, there's uh, a chance that it might not be open by the time we release this book. We'll that see. is true. But uh, if it if it's still open, give it a peep if you're interested. Um, a reminder out of what they do. Employee of the month gets their photo on the podcast set for you know, the entirety of the time that they are that person. Which is a month. As or well as other benefits. Renew it, et cetera. This is, uh, you know, you could put any picture. It doesn't have to be a photo of you. It could be anything. But uh, for now, this is going to be Queen Molly's last run on this podcast until we get a new employee of the month. Oh, well. Bye, Molly. It's been fun. And right. Can I just say really quick before we move on that I, I'm sorry to all the audio listeners. I, uh, I know that I've given you guys a hard time in the past, <laughs> uh, but I actually really value you guys a lot. The reason I'm saying this is because our trash fucking subreddit keeps memeing it because like they're just like... I'm going to bring this up again. I'm going to get into this. Go right. for it. Go Our for subreddit it. fucking sucks ass. Yep. Like, dude. Major ass, dude. It's the worst. They're, 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 they just fucking are so, so trash. It's, so it we still sucks ass? Still, I, it, for a little bit after I insulted them, it got like a little better. And then like, I think even, like all the good memers gave up because mm. it's just... Do you guys reply on it? I do. Yeah. I, 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 comments. I have a Reddit account, what, but I don't use it. Is your Reddit name Fitz? It's good guy Fitz. Okay, so they would know it was you. Yeah, it's like a tag that says yeah. Fitz. My one sucks. My Reddit name, I don't even know what it is because Toby on the telly is taken. Oh. Uh, mm. hmm. Sucks to be you. So I don't reply to stuff. Yeah. Either way, our subreddit sucks. Uh, so if you want to check out r slash misfits and improve it, uh, please. please do that. Well, we need to be like giving them content and templates and you know, things that they can make memes out of. Well, we have to do everything? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, do something. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, obviously that's very true as well. You know, we got uh, a green screen here. We could just film a couple of fucking... Don't say that. They're going to expect it. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck you. You're right. You're right. No, there hasn't been a lot to work with recently, uh, which is fair enough. However, they're still trash. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> Toby's just choked on his uh, on his gamer subs there. <laughs> Code misfits. It's uh, squeaking. He's really squeaking. <laughs> You okay? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Be careful. You know, I was playing um, Tech It with Jay Schlatt uh, the other week uh, and a few other of the guys, and um, he took a sip of his Pepsi towards the end of it, and he actually almost fucking died on stream. Like, he, he was coughing for like 30 minutes. Holy shit. Like, we thought it was a bit because he Schlatt tends to do these bits right. where they just drag <laughs> on. Uh, but no, he was actually really, really like struggling. He must have really inhaled that Pepsi. Yeah, and for the next hour on his stream, he was like trying to continue, but he just kept coughing, and he eventually just had to end it. It's so sad. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so sad. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really sad. Um, what happened this weekend, guys? Let's talk about it. This weekend, we did MEO. MEO. We had uh, the big Melbourne Esports Open. That was a lot of fun. We had mm. two meet and greets. Two meet and greets, each going for around three hours, sitting down at a table, signing autographs, saying good day, uh, shaking <laughs> about 300 people's hands, and then applying a lot of hand sanitizer. <laughs> okay, none of these be rude about it. Uh, it's, not, it's not rude. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah, it's, uh, I hope that they fucking wash their hands after the meet and greet, after, wa after fucking shaking mine, because, you know, I'm shaking like a couple hundred people's hands. Yes, that's true. You know, that's a lot of germs i don't know if they have tuberculosis or system. tb or herpes or, yeah. or what no it, it, for youtubers events they're notorious for getting sick because you're mm -hmm. just around so many sweaty gamers and they're yep. all uh sweating on you and uh you know shaking your hand and spitting in your eyes and stuff mm -hmm. yeah they're really indecent people we got yeah the, i love getting spat on oh, it it's was, the best it was before mm. the before the first meet and greet uh we went to the borderlands booth for borderlands 3 mm. uh, me and fitz sat down and uh, played a bit of borderlands really really enjoyed it it was really good it's good uh the good guys over at 2k uh hit us up for it and while we were sitting down, we were just gonna, you know, you know just play the demo. And th this guy from JB Hi-Fi wearing a chain and, and having JB Hi-Fi oh, yeah. is an electronic store here in New Zealand and Australia. For anyone who isn't from there, yeah, yeah. they were they were they were what sponsoring uh, MEO. They were doing like yeah, a little sponsored so. yeah. sponsored thing for it. So this guy that I guess worked for JB Hi-Fi was doing interviews, and he was just a fucking character. He just comes up. He was dressed mid, in a wig on. And yeah, mid-game play. He was basically blonde Dr. Disrespect. Yeah, a very 80s looking character. It was, it was it was a fucking pretty funny interview. Have you seen that video? Like, where did that even go? I, I, don't, I don't think they used it. I don't it think it would go anywhere because he swore so much. Yeah, we, <laughs> no, I said, can we swear? And he was like, sure. And I was like, fuck yeah. You know, like. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Problem. Maybe they're still editing it. I don't know. I hope it wasn't live. <laughs> <laughs> if it was live, it would have been hilarious. Mm. That would be so guy. awkward because yeah. they're walking around asking people like, hey, do you want to be in an interview? And like everyone in that room was like, no, no, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. Mm. 
Yeah, these events are always very weird because we don't really know what's happening on the day. We just kind of we show just, up. And yeah. It feels very like... It feels very disorganized. We arrived and we were like, we thought we we're going straight to the meet and greet and then we were led to the Borderlands booth and we're like, oh, okay, this is happening. Yeah. It's very funny. We were just like... It's just one of those days where you just have a whole bunch of stuff thrown at you. You just and follow you're Ryan everywhere. You're escorted around by security, and then you it's all improv. And then you meet him like a million fucking people, and then you go back to your little backstage thing, and then you go home. And I don't know it's very interesting, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. fun. Regardless, if you saw us at MEO, it was very very nice to see you. Mm-hmm. Um, I genuinely really enjoy doing the meet and greets. Same. Um, it's uh, it's the, always uh, a lot of fun. That kid in the uh, what jacket? What was it called? Menu log. Menu, menu log. log. He was in a menu log jacket. Oh, that was so wholesome. Mm. You want to we'll explain ex- what happened? So basically, I'm pretty sure the story was he went into the line uh, and got all of our signatures besides Mason because he had to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And when he saw Mason come back, you know, this kid must have been nine or ten. He was pretty young, and too young for yeah, our content. Too young for our yeah. content. So. Uh, so he goes ahead and, uh, you know, he tries going back into the line, like trying to cut the line just to say hi to Mason, shake his hand, get his autograph or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I think an enforcer. No, Mason, Mason said, yeah, come here. Yeah. And so he went under the fence thing and went to go uh, say hi to Mason. Uh, after Mason told him to, and then the security guard was like, "Well, yeah, I mean, Loma. Mason, Mason just saw him there, and he was like, yeah, fuck it, just like come along." Yeah, mm-hmm. the security like security grabbed him, pretty much took him out. So the kid was really <laughs> upset. Spear tackled. Yeah, really. <laughs> and then, uh, so what happened was, you know, he was really upset. I think there were a couple of tears at that point. Uh, we had finished up the meet and greet, and then we we're going to do a big group photo. So we were on top of the stage. We had everyone in the meet and greet just uh, chilling out below us, and the the kid in the menu lock jacket. Uh, comes up, he was, you know, tears in his eyes. We we're all signing his uh, jacket, and he mm-hmm. was, you know, you know he like right, came up on the stage, yeah. bright green jacket, yeah. And yeah. we, uh, you know, he hugged everybody. It was super wholesome. It was so nice. Yeah, still crying by the way. Yeah, he was still tears rolling down his cheeks. It was so mm-hmm. cute. But then uh, his mom actually, uh, I think sent, it was his dad, or was it his dad? It was his brother, right? It was his no, brother. no. His, 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 sent, uh, do you know about the DM? No. Oh, his his dad DM'd us. Oh, really? Yeah. And thanked us for for being so uh, like nice to him and stuff. And I'm pretty, then I'm pretty sure I also said also uh, I I wasn't aware of what kind of content you guys are doing, so he's going to moderate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what his kid watches which more, is totally which is a, which is a good thing. He also invited us to. He said if you're ever out in wherever he said. At, on a Sunday night, come have dinner with us. Yeah, it was very <laughs> sweet. Well, like at his house. Yeah, yeah. cook a cheeky dinner. Hilarious. Vlog it. God, I, I, I could use a home-cooked meal, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, nah, it'll be menu lock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it, it was yeah. very fun, though. Um, it was a very fun day. And, yeah, it was very nice to meet all of you guys. Uh, however, I believe there was some kind of party on the Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. so yes. I, was, I, was, uh, <laughs> I was hanging out with Ryan, and I was like, oh, um, uh, I'm going to go meet Oasis soon, uh, another streamer. And Ryan goes, oh, Oasis is with Loser Fruit. And Loser Fruit's coming to the party tonight, so you'll probably see her. And I was like, oh, there's a party tonight? He goes, yeah, at your house. And I was like, right. a p- party at my house tonight that I had no idea of? And he was like, yep. So there yeah, was, but I, there was I knew happening. about it. I, I, I could have sworn that you would have known about it. I had no idea. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, it, nice. was, it was still a lot of fun. Uh, we all ended up coming back from MEO. It was on the Sunday. Uh, invited. It was like maybe 30 fucking people. It was a lot of people over. Um, 30? It's like, not that much. I don't know, man. The most people that's ever been in my house, they, no. you know, it's like there, were, there had to be people upstairs, you know, because there's there's two crowded downstairs. There's a lot of people outside. People were everywhere. Hmm. They were all drinking. If there was that many, there's probably more than 30. Probably like 50 to 100, surely. No, no, no. It was probably... It was <laughs> you probably, fit a lot of people it probably, it was probably 30. Yeah, but we were packed like sardines. It's just that every room probably had around five to 10 people in it, you know. Like okay. Every major area, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, everyone was drinking. We were getting really fucked up. Shots, fucking, a uh, lot of marijuana. Mm-hmm. We were all we were all having a good time. You know, it was pretty it was pretty standard, man. But after the party, like the fucking the the, the floor was completely covered in just a layer of beer and sticky alcohol. Yeah, and it was just you know you, you step anywhere and you just go. Mm-hmm. You, you know, it was pretty gross. We had a we had a cleaned. Uh, the next day, I think it was, um, <laughs> yeah, because we were at MEO, and uh, and I tell Ryan, I was like, hey, uh, you think uh, you know Chris and Manuel could come over? Uh, the two guys that uh, interns work for us. You think they'd come over and 
and uh, clean that, you know, clean the house. And he's like, no, they don't work Sundays. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, well, can you call someone? Can we please get somebody? Because I don't want the house to like be in that state for more than twenty four hours. And he's like, yeah, okay, we can call someone. And Should've so about that before you threw a fucking yeah, party well, at your house. Yeah, well, I didn't fucking organize the party. That was all on him. Mm. I said, yeah, it's okay as long as it's clean. Mm. You know, as long as it's all taken care of and it's nothing party, gets broken. Though. And uh, so you know, I end up going back after the second meetup. And uh, there's just one guy cleaning up the entire mess. Yeah, and apparently he's... Ryan, uh, Ryan put the he like put the message out like, "Hey, we're looking for a cleaner to clean this party up." And uh, Ryan was like, oh, "I'll give you this much money." And the guy was like, "Oh no, that's way too much money. I'll take like way less." So he, I think he said, oh, "I'll do it for a third of that price." And then he got to the house and he texted Ryan, who was like, "He was like." Must have been one hell of a party, huh? <laughs> yeah, should have just taken full like, price. I think Ryan was like, yeah, no, I'll give you the money. I told you I'll give you the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, good. I didn't even see the wreckage. I didn't oh, dude, did it, I. Was, it was really fucked. The entire floor in the kitchen uh, going out to the patio was completely like brown and black. Why was, was just, there so much spillage? You know, because everyone was fucked up. You know, people were knocking over beers. You know, I think there was like three shattered glass bottles outside. The shit that was just knocked over. Um, there was just alcohol and soda everywhere. So there any, was any particular stories from the night that stood out to you, or <laughs> none that I could probably talk about on the podcast? Why? Surely I don't know, dude. I mean, uh, don't just don't say names. Um, uh, we got somebody to hit a bong that normally doesn't hit bongs. Okay. Um, uh, which was really fun <laughs> and interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, what else oh. fucking interesting happened, dude? I mean, didn't our podcast editor Mitchell get absolutely fucking? Oh my sloshed? god! Yeah, he got he got pretty pretty retarded. He drank <laughs> a lot. He drank a lot of alcohol, and as well as that, smoked a lot of weed. Mm. And um, yeah, he was he was kind of a mess. He was. <laughs> I, 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 Mitchell's somewhere around here. I don't want to. I don't want to rant him out, but yeah, dude, no. he was just. Fair yeah, enough, it, was, fair it was a bit embarrassing for him. I, I think. Uh, yeah, there's but, nothing worse than getting like embarrassingly drunk. Oh yeah, but he was. Just, he was just very. He he was off kilter. Like couldn't walk, couldn't <laughs> stand. He was just <laughs> leaning on everybody. You know, he was getting. He was getting very emotional, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> then he just lied down. And then we had a big bowl of cashews, mixed assorted nuts, on our uh, on our coffee table near the mm-hmm. couch. He was lying down on the couch. Couch, and he was like, I got to throw up. And so someone thought very quickly, took the bowl of nuts and just fucking poured it out onto the table and Ugh. then and then gave it to him to throw up in. And there was just a fucking giant glass bowl of puke. Oh yeah. I was just chilling on the couch. Reminds me of that time when Ryan <laughs> threw the into nachos, the nacho bowl. The nacho <laughs> Oh, you yeah. know what was really weird for me? Because uh, I didn't go to the party. I just decided to go to the office. Uh, I was pretty tired. But I was sitting there like... Uh, I think I was, you know, playing games with Spud or something, and I was—I just had Twitter on my second monitor, and it was so funny just seeing shit come up. It was really weird seeing shit come up, and it'd be a photo from someone, like a tweet from someone that I don't know very well or I don't know at all, uh, and it'll be a photo at my house. It was such a bizarre experience because you know there were people that like they were industry people or something who yeah. I might have seen or been introduced to, but I don't know them at all. Right. And then all of a sudden they're taking photos at my house. It was so, such a strange experience. Mm. Yeah, it really was. It was weird having a lot of people over. One of my main concerns was privacy. Like I didn't want people taking pictures, like going in rooms and taking fucking pictures. So all the, It was all bare the, in my room when yeah, I went home all the, two days later. All the bedrooms were locked for the most part. I think the only reason we opened your bedroom up was so people could use the ensuite and mm. just go to the bathroom. Because, you know, if Mitchell is throwing up in the downstairs bathroom for two hours and there's only one other upstairs bathroom and then... You know, there's 20 people that are drinking alcohol, which is a diuretic, which makes you piss. Then they're what gonna... about your own sweet? I let people use it. Hmm. Uh, I had a lot of people coming in and out of my room. Uh, I had my valve index set up with Pavlov loaded, so I would just go downstairs, get a lot of people really, really stoned, and then bring them up, bring them upstairs and have them try the index. It's the oh, most yeah. swagger shit ever. Yeah, dude, it was so. Dude, ever. they were they were like, dude, this is fucking amazing. This is so cool. Thanks for showing me. I'd be like, yep, mm-hmm, goddamn right. <laughs> fucking index is sick. You should get it. <laughs> you know? Just one of those things. So I guess secretly works for Valve. I <laughs> wish, dude. I wish. I wish they had me fucking contracted as a salesman. <laughs> you um, know? Speaking of games, uh, you wanted to talk about Q World again. <laughs> yes, dude. While I was at that party, while I was at that party, I got a fucking ping on my on my phone. I was like, oh, what's this? I look at it. Fucking Wole, the, the developer of Q World, fucking tweeted out a 16 minute new gameplay. Uh, of 
Oh my god, dude! Was and it I, good? Yeah, it looked really awesome. I mean, I was fucking blind drunk when I, I I literally sprinted up the stairs. I hopped off the couch and sprinted upstairs, closed my door, and I just watched the video. Do you think part of it is nostalgia? Like no, <laughs> no, because <laughs> underlying it seems like a pretty meh game. No. No, I remember it. It, it was a lot of fun. It's a shit game in its current state. I was really hyped for it when I was young, and I was like, this game is not living up to its potential. Like, there yeah. was not a lot of substance at all. It was just I, empty. Yeah, I played it for four days and then realized that there was nothing more to it, and it was just practically a tech demo. It was practically just a tech demo. I kind of feel like it's always just going to feel like a kind of shitty have Breath you, of the uh, Wild. Have you, have you seen the new gameplay? Yeah. Yeah. It looks really fucking good. Mm. I really, I really want to play it. I will. I mean, when it drops, dude, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna be fucking playing that shit. Yeah, I just, I just hope it's not a complete disappointment. Because then, oh man, I'm just. It's, it's like, well, then I could at least put it to rest. Yeah, I could at least get some closure. You really need closure. <laughs> you really one. need closure on this one. It's been a, six years of of this open book. I don't think we're ever gonna get. How the closure. fuck can no. you be obsessed with something for that long, dude? I let you, Daisy go. You just don't if. understand. You just don't understand, Toby. You don't. You, you just. You don't fucking get it. <laughs> Nobody fucking gets it. No one. Yeah, because it's ridiculous. It. It's not ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It's not. It's not ridiculous. You don't understand. You just don't understand. You played Daisy on stream the other day, right? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, uh, it's all right on the modded servers. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. on the modded servers, it's just like. Uh, like Arma 2, Epoch, that sort of shit. You know, it's like yeah. got traders. You know, everything's pretty straightforward. If you just want like gunplay, it's pretty fun. Me and Swagger played it on stream the other week and uh, I ran into a lot of technical difficulties. Although towards the end, we met these two people on this modern huh. server. One of the guys, and, and like they literally just like, uh, I think there were cigars that they had in the game. Yeah. But he was like pretending it was weed and he was like passing us these like weed cigars and mm. you could see yourself in game like smoking yeah, them smoking this cigar swagger pretended to get extremely fucking high and then we found out the guy spoke spanish and swagger started trying to speak spanish to him mm, como esta mi amigo uh, I, before you guys got here today i was playing daisy with two friends and we were just sitting in the trader area talk like fucking with people and mm -hmm. it was heaps of fun it just reminded me of like you know your classic armor role play servers and stuff we were just messing around and uh, you know, doing the emotes and stuff. You know, uh, speaking of the drug thing, though, uh, Daisy was going to be banned in Australia. I heard about that. Because Whatever happened to that? Is well, it still Daisy, going to happen? Um, uh, Bohemia was like, we'll just take drugs out. Fair enough. The Australian government was like, oh, you got drugs in your game. You can't do that. And they're like, okay, well, we'll take them what out. What a bunch of fucking pussies. There's, what a bunch of weirdos. There are so many dinosaurs in the Austra uh, Australian government, I think. Yeah, there's like dinosaurs in every government. I think like once you get past the age of like 65, you should just not be allowed to <laughs> fucking go in the government. Or have an opinion in general. Yeah, yeah literally <laughs> fucking boomers. Get out of here. Get out of here, boomer. Mm. I don't know. I, term limits are lit. I think there should be fucking term limits for everything. What, what do you mean? Like, you know, in hey, terms you can only be president for eight years. Yeah, president has two terms. Why'd you but randomly segue to that? I don't know. Because he's saying we're talking about the government. Oh, yeah. right, right, you know, I don't know how the fucking Aussie government works. They're irrelevant. But the American government, how it goes with the Senate and the House and all that shit, there's like no there's no term limits. They could run as many times as they want and just have an entire career of being corrupt fucking dinosaurs getting uh, I, getting money i feel like it's probably better to be irrelevant than be relevant in the way the american government is <laughs> i don't know man i don't know true i like it a lot let's get off the subject Just of saying. politics before we slip slip into a hole i fucking hate politics man yeah they're annoying it sucks because i know i have to pay attention to it it's like it's like adult school it's like <laughs> i thought i was done with things that i had to pay attention to that i don't like you, you know? know in australia uh -huh. you get fined if you don't vote that's bullshit that is bullshit that is bullshit you should have the right to not vote yeah. Yeah, it's freedom. Mm. In America, you can just not vote. Yeah. Just let. Although I guess, like, I don't know. It's like, if no one fucking votes, then what happens? I yeah. Know that. I mean, the argument against not voting is, I mean, the argument for not voting is like, uh, you know, I don't want to vote if I don't agree with anyone. But then it's like, well, you have, to, you're going to agree to some extent with someone. You're just too lazy to properly research it. That's why you're not wanting to vote. Yeah, there's an argument there for sure. Yeah. I, um, I think there's definitely like merits to both arguments. Yeah. Um, All right. That's it. I'm running for president. Really? No. Oh. Fuck that, dude. You're, you're reversing you're, Kanye. Dude, you're you're fucking whenever you're the president, your hair just goes white in two years. Yeah, you but just, silver foxes are lit. Mm, they get yeah. all the babes. 
Especially sure. ex-president Silver Foxes. I want to get I want to get like a white stripe when I'm old. I want to get like a gray stripe going down the left and right of my hair. I think it'll look sick. Stop talking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, being the president is like being the worst social media influencer ever. Dude, I'd have so much fun, dude. I'd be the shit poster in chief. It'd be so lit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and people would hate you just oh, like dude, hate Trump. It, it would be so great. I wish the White House had a Twitter account like the Wendy's Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> just just constantly roasting people. It's like, yeah, it's like retweeting China with like little, <laughs> little quips and stuff. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, that would be the best. It's going to be the evolution of humanity. Everything just goes into irony. Even mm. the things that should be serious. All the, all the fucking millennials are going to grow up and be like, you know, this is our sense of humor. And then everything's just not going to make any fucking sense. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to nuke another country and be like, it was just a fucking prank, bro. Dude, has, has there ever been a, a generation of people that is so like besieged by the power of irony than this one? I, I don't know, dude. It's so weird. The, the fucking way that like humor has evolved through the internet is has been Very really odd. interesting. Because you know, back in like 2005, it was like those fucking meme templates with like the black border with the white text at the bottom. Yeah. You know, or it was like it's like literally when you like, think about I, that. I, that's I can, like I can has cheeseburger yeah. like the fucking cat. That shit is like the black and just, white of of memes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's literally weird. like oh my god. Now now it's just like. Base boosted, distorted, deep fried, dank memes. Yeah, or <laughs> or it's a photo that means nothing if you don't know what it what it is. Yeah. Well, the problem is that things like memes are just hyper accelerated nowadays because anyone who's involved in meme <laughs> culture, like memes, get old in two days, at least for me. I think that like being like a social media person or a person who has a YouTube channel that's comedy, we're like exposed to this shit all the time in our Twitter mentions and like on Reddit or whatever. So we are kind of like on the forefront of like what's hot in terms of internet humor. Yeah. And so like we see shit and then it immediately becomes like old. And then it's yeah. like, what's the next shit like? And just, who's coming up with just this shit? Literally count like Uganda Knuckles, Big Chungus, fucking Moth and Lamp. Mm, oh my know. God. Yeah. Nobody. Literally nobody. Like, who yeah. remembers? Oh, stop with the nobody shit. There's, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, it's just the weirdest little cycle. Um, because you think back to those memes and you just kind of understand how anyone found them funny. <laughs> but because at the time, only, it was like, oh, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's only hot for like a week. And it's like, uh, discarded. Right. Some, of the, some of the memes can run about a month. I think fucking Uganda Knuckles went on for like three months. But often that's because uh, people don't accept that it's over and people keep going. But yeah. like on mass, it is over. Yeah, yeah like uh, like to anyone who's in the know or on the forefront, it was it was over like two weeks ago. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's the latest meme that you think of, has died? You think is just completely gone? Oh, good question. Um, fuck. I, I don't keep up with memes. I actually can't think of anything off the top of my head. I really wonder what future memes, like, I'm talking generationally. Like, what, what will the next generation memes be? Like, <laughs> our children, what will they look it's, at? It's going to be like pop-up ads, but they're just memes. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> just, all, the, all the millennials just go to, straight into marketing, and they're like... <laughs> Memes. Just a pop we got up Pepe it. out of nowhere. Yes. And yep. I wonder if it'll ever swing back, because like the internet, I don't think will allow it. Because like you think back to like the '60s, humor back then was basically like, you know, at the '60s it was normal for people to have like jokes memorized so they could tell them at dinner parties. Mm. Yeah, and that was how comedy worked. It was like, oh, I got this great one, and, and it's like a right. five minute joke, and everyone has the attention span for it, and then everyone laughs, and then they go home and whatever. Nowadays and it's like <laughs> <and cry. laughs> Nowadays it's like so different because it's just like, oh yeah, I already saw that. Oh, do you saw that on Reddit? Yeah, I already saw that. Yeah, one. and no one has right. a long attention span anymore. No, nowadays there's like there's very little uh, like telling of jokes and more just like, oh, did you see that video? Do you see that meme? Right. Mm -hmm. Do you see this like reaction image? Yeah, exactly. It's never like uh, I noticed this earlier today. Actually, I was like, I, I had a video and I wanted to see if people in my Discord had seen it, and I, instead of going. Oh, you should watch this. It's like, you, you've seen this, right? Mm. You just assume everyone's seen all the semi-relevant shit. Yeah. And usually they have. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And it's very interesting how like you feel good when you share a meme with someone that they haven't seen. And they laugh. Even though it's not yours. It's just you're mm. sharing this. It's like, oh, look, I, I found this on the internet using my detective skills. <laughs> I yeah. saw this video, like, check it out. And if they don't like the video, you feel bad. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, no, they don't like the video that I liked. <laughs> That must mean yeah. I'm kind of weird. You're into those memes, Fitz, where it's like 
You like that one Twitter account that just posts nonsense, like just absolute nonsense. What do you mean? What was that one Twitter account you showed me, and it was just like shit that just made no sense, and like Call Me Carson? No, no, no <laughs> not Call Me Carson. This was a while ago. You showed me this Twitter account. It was just saying like some random crazy shit. Was it about sex? I don't think it was about sex. Was it like the when like it was almost like it was a foreigner or a child trying uh, to speak? I love that kind of stuff because yeah. it's like just drenched in. Like satire. Yeah, it's it was, and and you always send me the fucking uh, like those cursed images, the fucking like the shit that's just like retarded. Yeah, like, I remember uh, when you used to tweet the fucking crab rave shit, and it was like, <laughs> my mom's dead. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I love that that era, dude. That's actually my favorite era of memes. To it date. was funny. It's it's it really good. It kind of originated from the subreddit called r slash OK Buddy Retard. Yes, that one. Yeah, um, which is just like it's literally just kids on the internet just um like taking. <laughs> taking comedy to its to its complete extreme to the point where it's really not even funny anymore. But if you sort by <laughs> top of all time, I was just dying of laughter looking at this shit, and it's like it doesn't make any sense. You but it's funny because it's just t it's taking the piss out of the culture, you know. You so saw, wait, what sort of shit is it? Like, it, I don't know, man. Like, I, it's really fucking hard well, to you explain. You saw what was it one uh, for example where it was like. Um, this guy is making an edit, and then he gets a text, and he goes to the text, and he goes, uh, hey, like, uh, we, we have information about your parents that were in the plane crash. They might still be alive. Yeah. And then he re replies with, uh, okay, hang on, though. I'm making a Twitter video. <laughs> and then uh, and then it, it's like Thanos or, or the, the Hulk smashing Loki with the, with the fucking, like, cheesy boing mm. sound effect. Like, a big part of the memes comes from... Like that, that, that will make sense if you see it. But like, <laughs> like, no, no, a, a big part of it is taking something really fucking dark and disturbing yeah. and just like making it, <laughs> making it completely uh, fucking hilarious. hilarious and making light of it. By you know what loves that? Who? TikTok. Really? TikTok is like, it seems like most of their like TikTok cringe compilations or TikTok compilations and shit. It's like ironic dank like memes. Like 50% of the shit in those, in those compilations will be uh, like, someone talking about how their dad's dead but like well <laughs> dancing and yeah stuff. well that's like yeah. that's kind of like what this is it's like yeah. this, like crying my, while whipping one of my yeah. favorites is there's this uh it's like a smiley like a traditional emoji movie looking like smiley face doing a thumbs up like the most boomer yeah. emoji right. ever with like royalty f happy music going dun 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 and like that goes up like five seconds and then like some text pops up that just says like my dad died in the Iraq war <laughs> and it's it's just funny because like it's just you don't expect yeah. it no, yeah. you're not expecting you it expect it to take a horrific dark turn because you're in this little happy place mm -hmm. I don't know I mean that's kind of like the humor from I mean, uh, yeah, videos I rem and stuff I remember when you tweeted shit like that and I did find it fucking funny it's just like it's just like you know, obviously it's dumb yeah. and totally ignorant and stupid. It, but. It's, it's the kind of shit that makes me chortle. It just makes me go like, <clears throat> well, just laugh. I think the reason is because like the root of so much comedy is averting people's expectations. Yeah. Uh, and that's like a very blunt and um, how would you say, like unrefined way of doing that, mm -hmm. which kind of makes it funnier in a lot of ways. I was talking today on stream actually about how um, like... Uh, about offensive humor and about like why I feel so comfortable making like racist jokes or offensive jokes. And I think the reason is, well, part of it's because we grew up in New Zealand, which isn't a very racist country. And like the yeah. idea of actually being racist to me is like fucking hysterical. Yeah. New like, Zealand, I cannot imagine actually being racist. Like, holy no. shit. New Zealand like, is, is like a very diverse country. It has yeah. so many people. It's a very common place for people to migrate their lives to. Yeah. So like there's so many different cultures there that you yeah, never like, really come across yeah, racism. Like all ever. through school, we were growing up with like Asian kids, like African kids, like Maori kids. You know. the same, in, same in the US. I mean, you know, I just think it's personally stupid to just blanket an entire you know group of people as being you know bad or whatever sure. it's all about individuals well sure you know? it's fundamentally like ridiculous yeah right? it, it's really like, stupid obviously. to base your judgment and and judge somebody without even speaking to them yeah you know you never know if someone's good or bad you know if they're a fucking asshole or if they're sick exactly you just have to talk to them and so whenever we're making like racist jokes or we're taking the piss out of some tragedy that happened a long time ago <laughs> 9 11 uh we're really just laughing at like people who would actually do that seriously i guess it's kind of like what it's, it is it's like i can't believe like you're actually you know i don't know i mean it's very obvious where the line is in terms of you know oh yeah that's just a joke but uh you know because it's not like we're fucking pulling a kramer on stage <laughs> well that fucking, wasn't that the, yeah, problem, that the difference <laughs> there is that he wasn't well, he probably in his mind thought maybe somewhere he was being funny. 
Do we want to, uh, Are you sure? Let's explain <laughs> yeah, the Kramer incident. Video? A lot of people may not know about the Kramer incident. Yeah, it's been a long time ago. Kramer is a character uh, on Seinfeld, uh, which is a classic TV show. You, most of you probably heard of it. Hopefully. <laughs> Fucking 13-year-olds. Uh, and uh, the actor who played Kramer... I w- was the show still running when he did this? Or was it um, over? I think it might have been over. The show was over, and he decided to get into stand-up. Stand-up comedy. Mm. And uh, like he got heckled in the crowd. Um, by a black man. By a black man, and he just went on this huge racist like. Oh yeah, he was he was screaming tirade. the n word at this guy. Uh, he said that back in his day, uh, he would put a rope around his neck and stick a fork in his ass. Yeah, like all this crazy, <laughs> like, really out, fucked up shit. Outlandishly racist and, like, you know, stuff. Jesus. There are laughs in the audience, but it's all nervous laughs. It's like, oh, uh, what the fuck's uh, going like, on? What the fuck? Like, it's like, real. Like, what the fuck is this? And this is all on video. You can look it up on oh, YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's a legitimate fucking meltdown. It ruined that guy's fucking career. There's no recovery. No. There's no recovery I mean, from he, that. he has apologized, obviously. I think that he was just had a nervous breakdown on stage and like <laughs> he was trying to retaliate by roasting this guy but he just went in on the wrong thing which was yes. uh, uh, you know, yeah his race <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's a uh, very interesting uh, career move there by girl kramer um yeah he's made his millions though so i'm sure he's fine <laughs> <laughs> i hope um what the fuck were you even talking about we we're talking about uh, the, the line between what would be a joke and what would be racist well, i mean it's very you know if we're making jokes about the n-word past it's just it's such an obvious you know avenue that it's comedy and it's for humor and it's not like legitimately well the line is just what the intention is first of all and yeah. then the execution is up to you of uh, course which is why like you know my philosophy is if you're going to be racist you better be goddamn you better sure you're be, being fucking yeah. funny. Because uh, if you're not, then, you know, it, you never do it for shock. However, like, you know, obviously there's a limit to this, but if you try a racist joke and it's not funny, like, I don't think the person should necessarily be crucified for that. No. If it was obviously their intention to make a joke, it happens. Like, you sometimes yeah. say something yeah. thinking it'll be funny and it's not. Like, obviously, the thing there's I've, many things in my recording sessions which have been cut out. The thing um, I've found about, like, people that are, you know, five like five, six, seven years younger than us, you know, like teenagers, preteen sort of age, mm. is that they love shock humor at the oh, moment. Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. think? Where, yeah, it yeah. is just like... I loved it when I was a kid. It's like... I mean, But there are so many kids nowadays that will literally just be like, say the N-word, and that is enough. Of, that is the yep. joke. It's I mean, like, that's what yep. we do. The joke is... Just, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know... I, the problem is like so many people just instead of trying to make a joke or try to be clever around something that happens yeah. to be racist or offensive or something, it's not that. It's just l- being offensive is funny. Well, it's like when I was Whoa. in the fucking fifth grade, you know, if someone said uh, dick cock shit or fuck, I was like, ha! you know, I thought it was the fucking most yeah. hilarious joke in the world because well, it was just, you know, I was just fucking well it's because they're young and they're just poking yeah. at things they're like what mm-hmm. happens if i say that like what happens if i do this like that's yeah. they're figuring guess, it out i guess the difference is now they're doing it online yeah yeah and Where, now everyone's yeah. exposed to it all the exactly. time and you yeah. don't know how young the person is or how old they are yeah, or if they want to get into a college and they're part of a fucking facebook group or whatever and they and they said horrific fucking shit to their friends and their friends were saying horrific shit back just because they were trying to make each other laugh and not because they had ill intentions if someone wants to share that to the college, then the college could just be like, nope, nope, denied. No, you're a terrible person. Yeah, it's interesting. Because obviously, like, you should be able to say horrific shit to your friends just for the sake of it and just have a laugh about it. Yeah, because like, I cares. love having conversations which are just like, her- like, so much of our humor initially was just having these long, improvised, yeah. fucked up conversations about like abortion or whatever the fuck, touchy subjects, as though we were taking it seriously. Yeah. And then, like, it just escalates to this extreme point, yeah, you know, and then, you know, th- but you're just joking, you know, you're just, I, th- I think a lot of the jokes, um, when you're making these things that are racy and really like treading the line is that you could start where people are like, Oh, what's this guy doing? What's this guy talking about? Yeah. And then you keep progressing it. So it goes even more and more and more and more extreme to yeah. the point where it's like, if you don't realize it's a joke, you're an idiot. Yeah. You know, of course. So that's the know. beauty of comedy. I just watched Dave Chappelle's new special. Fucking would highly recommend it. Mm. So much of his comedy in particular and also other great comedians like Louis C.K., uh, Bill Burr. Love that guy. Is they take the audience to a place, like they'll begin the joke with a controversial statement and everyone gets a little uncomfortable and you can feel Mm. the tension. 
and that tension is exactly what makes the punchline better towards the end because like somehow he took this fucked up premise mm, yeah and made everyone laugh about it well, and you know it's, it's like it's like louis ck uh of course you shouldn't of course of course slavery is bad yeah of course slavery is bad but, but yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. every great thing that was ever built, like every wonder <laughs> of the world, was built on the back of slaves. Yeah, you know, like shit like that. Yeah, and you know, that's the best fucking thing about comedy is that everyone at that show, hopefully, knows that they're in this little bubble where yeah. they're just entertaining ridiculous yeah, it's premises, it's just jokes. While this like mastermind, you know, who's worked like for years probably on the special, kind of guides them through this yeah. fucked yeah. up conversation. Yeah, and obviously. Um, you know the th because comedy is so subjective it's like you know how much can you really judge a comedian because there might be you oh, know some can't. someone might have a huge com uh, huge audience of people that absolutely love their jokes and just because you're offended by it doesn't necessarily mean they're not funny they're just not funny to you sure well yeah i mean like being a comedian like an actual comedian not like what we do um yeah. like obvious it's i i think it's a really noble thing to do and i think that they're really really important to society mm -hmm. because uh they're the only people that can get away with doing this kind of shit um you know well, like you can't get away with doing this in the workplace but these people can on this platform it's kind of like the sacred thing mm -hmm. which is why it makes me so furious when people fuck with it you yeah know? and they're like well trying yeah, to shut them down you know, assholes are the, you know assholes want to censor comedy you know <clears throat> you know fuck anyone who wants to censor comedy or comedians away and all that yeah. shit you know I, I was looking at a lot of stuff from monty python back in the 60s you know they they did some really fucking oh big time they did some really fucking uh <laughs> pretty messed up bits there was one shoot the poof okay. it was literally like it was like a a, a skit where they were sh trying to shoot a gay guy uh mm -hmm. there was uh you know they did a lot of political commentary i mean they did a fuck ton of hitler things dude mm -hmm. you know the, the ministry of silly walks the, yeah. the, the whole fucking deal mr helter how are you mm -hmm. you know it's fucking you know and they tread that line but no one was pissed off back then they also did a lot of religious things oh yeah fuck ton you know they had a whole movie about it yeah mm -hmm. you know? well it's like obviously sometimes the joke doesn't land but that's okay like that's just a failed joke it's not like they fucking just because the joke is bad doesn't mean they suddenly meant what they said you know yeah. what i mean that's right. the most important thing to realize it's like yeah but oh, that's the thing with the comedy. Joke. It's like uh, uh, how comedy is at the moment. If you do make a bad joke, people think it's what you believe. Yeah, people, that it just instantly gets taken out of context. Mm, it's wild, man. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Um, I'm gonna hit up these Patreon questions. Cool. Mm -hmm. What do we got for uh, the Patreon Q and A? Couple questions from our lovely patrons. Uh, the first one is from Maddie. Uh, she says, "What is your biggest or weirdest fear?" What is the weirdest fear, boys? Man, I uh, I kind of wish I read that before we started because I actually can't think of anything off the top my of my biggest, head. My biggest fear is that Q World will never come out. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No, I think, I, I mean, I have a huge uh, spider phobia. Really? I really hate spiders. Fucking hate it. Mm. Uh, I have a huge fear of open water being like in a plane crash or in a, in my, or like I'm, out, I'm in the ocean and my boat sinks, mm -hmm. capsizes, and I'm just floating on top of the ocean. I'd, I'd want to drown. I just want to drown immediately. I couldn't handle that. Really? You know, I couldn't handle it. You know, who knows if a shark's fucking circling or going to come up and bite me. It's just that anxiety hmm. of waiting and not knowing what's under me and seeing nothing. I think I would probably have the same thing. Yeah, I couldn't do that. There's no way. It's one of my biggest fears whenever I fucking fly over the, the Pacific to come here. You know, it's not like I'm flying over the Atlantic where if I do crash, it's like, okay, cool. It's at least it's not the fucking Pacific. <clears throat> Fuck the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes me sweat. Shark infested waters, which really isn't that a big deal, you know. It's not a, but the tropical storms more so. Like right. you, you know, the tides, the fucking rip current. You'll, you're fucked. You're fucked. If yeah, the you, ocean's kind of fucked up. All the all the fucking abandoned, deserted islands that you fucking go to, and if you land on those, dude, you just get eaten by bugs. The ocean truly is the hood of the earth. <sighs> so what's your fear? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, Swagger said that he's got a huge arachnophobia. Uh, when I was 18, I really wanted a pet tarantula. Oh, God. Fuck off. Fuck that. I just, I, I, I always like... You were, I, you were such a little edgy kid, though. When I would see, like, um, when I'd see, like, videos on YouTube or something of people with pet tarantulas just, like, playing with them, I was like, that looks sick. I want one. Uh, and then you figured out you had to feed it live mice, and that freaked you out. No, that didn't freak me out. You he know, has the you, mice ready to you go. know when, <laughs> you were, when you were going to America last, I was talking to Ryan, I was like, I should just 
buy a pit tarantula. Really? They're like 20 bucks. You're still considering it. It's so cheap. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> not, not in my fucking house, dude. I'll squash that bitch if it comes out of its cage. Yeah, no, that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing that freaks me out. I'm like, if I had a tarantula or, or something and it was like, you know, I knew it couldn't hurt me, but, and I was, and I physically took it out of its cage, I'd be fine with it. But if I walked into my room one day and it had somehow got out, that would freak me the fuck out. Mm. It's like, that was, that's the thing mm. that makes me, that th- makes me think I would never, ever get one is because I'm like, just that fear of it getting out is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I went to Costa Rica when I was a child and um, there's a lot of uh, venomous spiders there and it was terrifying going to sleep uh, in some of these like places because you like will see them outside on the walls and shit. They're just they're just part of the climate, you know. They're just yeah, there. They're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna go in and bite you in your sleep. They really have no reason to. Yeah, tell that to you me know. at nine years old. Yeah, you, you know, know, I mean, yeah, I mean, if my dad got bitten in the forehead by a brown recluse. Uh, which Jesus, is, that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, fucking, fucking, just a really shy just black a guy. Black, <laughs> yeah, just like just come in and bite him. No, I was just, get out of your brown recluse. <laughs> <laughs> You bit on the forehead right here. <laughs> really? And uh, the brown recluse, the venom, uh, it eats away your flesh. Oh, and no. so, you know, he woke up, a huge spider bite, pussy and fucking infected. And he was like, what the fuck? And, it, and he just noticed it just started like disintegrating his fucking skin. And so he went to a doctor and got it, got it checked out. He still has a little mark here. Really? Where the, where the thing bit him. But yeah, dude, like, they, fuck, fuck spiders, dude. Yeah. Why, God? Why? When, when my dad was here, uh, we were at dinner and... Uh, we were talking about like my dad spends time in Australia and he he was telling Swagger about it, how like oh. he, he found uh, what was it Huntsman Spider in his car and it was like and it, and it crawled into the engine bay and he didn't know where it no, went no no it was the fucking f- the funnel web spider oh yeah the uh, funnel just, web. Hunts, Huntsman's a harmless right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the funnel, funnel web funnel web's a bad the funnel yeah. web he goes yeah he's t- he's t- he's describing this thing to me show show me pictures <laughs> of throw it up. <laughs> Show me pictures of the thing. And it just looks fucking terrible. Looks terrifying. He goes, yeah, this is the second most venomous spider in the world. <laughs> but it's also the most aggressive spider in the world. Mm. And I was like, that's not a good combo. He's like, no. Yeah, he, he said he said they're so aggressive that, you know, they are the most venomous. And also, they won't bite you once. They'll just keep fucking they'll, biting they'll, you. And, and, and they literally, you know, they brought a, one of his coworkers, his dad is a doctor, brought, brought the... A funnel web, you know, because if they see them in the wild, uh, usually they try to catch them and then bring them to the hospital so that they can milk the venom for anti venom. Yeah. Yeah. So he brought this fucking little bastard in, sets it down, and he, and he goes, Here, check this out. He fucking taps on the glass, and the thing literally runs towards his finger to try to bite it through the glass. Oh my God. And he's just fucking going for it. And I'm like, Fuck that. He also said that, uh, luckily, because they are pretty common in Australia, all the ambulances carry um, anti venom for mm-hmm. them. Which is pretty fucking cool. So, like, if you get better and you just call an ambulance and they'll give it to you in the ambulance, that's how quick it is. So Yeah. And yeah. I'm pretty sure one is for free. I don't know. I hope. Good to know. I don't know if I have a fear. Uh, yeah. Like a phobia. Like something I'm actually scared of. I, I'm, like, I'm, I'm kind of a bitch in lots of ways. I'm, I talked earlier on the podcast about how, like, I hate horror movies because I just right. genuinely get creeped out. Uh, but I think that's just because I live alone and I'm a pussy. Yeah. I mean, uh, like, like, obviously, you know, I would be scared if I got tortured. Or something like that. Yeah, but like, like that's, that's not just, that's, that's just not unpleasant like, for everyone. Yeah, though. it's yeah. not like an <laughs> underlying fear because no. it's like that wouldn't happen. You know, yeah. I think like one thing that I sometimes like think about is uh, I'm terrified of like uh, like accidentally hitting someone with my car or something like that. All right, mm. abs- I, I just could not imagine because what happened when I was a kid, I was playing on a playground once. I say a kid, I was probably more like 14 or something like that, just on this playground goofing around. And uh, this little girl, maybe who was like six, was up on this like, uh, you know, one of the taller sections of the playground. Right. And I accidentally knocked her off and like she landed and like knocked the wind out of her and she was crying. And the mother just went the fuck off on me. It was a complete mistake. Like, I don't think I could have even avoided it. I didn't even see her. Um, you know, maybe I could have avoided it. Yeah, maybe I pushed that bitch. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the mother really like yeah. was like, of oh course, yeah, of course. of course, she fucking knocked your four year old no, daughter like, off it was, the fucking it was thing, like, asshole. Very much so. Like, I, I just, I felt terrible. I was trying to comfort her, but she was like, "Get the fuck away from my daughter!" Like, really, really bad. Wow, what a bitch. 
Yeah, fuck her. It's like the uh, motherly instincts, though. You of know? course, no, yeah. I don't actually. Yeah. No, no, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like fun, dude. I'm just trying to explain how much it added to like my feeling of guilt. Yeah, I felt tremendous guilt for like a whole week after that, and I think that now I just couldn't imagine like hitting a child or accidentally killing someone or, you know, yeah, just like stuff like that. Man, salon would suck a lot of dick. If I if I would ever kill someone, I'd hope it'd be on purpose. Oh God, please! Like at least aim first, like with mm. the car. Um, <laughs> no, but for real, like that would uh, probably seriously mess me up. But yeah, it's not like I, I think it messed everyone up. It's not it's like, like I think up. about it like every time I'm in the car. Yeah, you know, exactly. sometimes I'll be like, oh, yeah, no, that sure would suck. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess that's kind of my yeah. I really thing. can't think of something that like I think nothing about. That frequently. Bugs you nothing that that you think about where you know you're just like, oh, that that would really fucking suck if that happened, or ooh, that's a thing that I really really dislike. Yeah, but like all things that are just common. Like not of actual phobia, yeah. things like getting shot, things like a creepy clown coming into my room at night and slicing up my ankle, stuff mm. like that. You know, normal shit. Mm. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I've never had a gun pointed at me, but I think that if anyone ever pointed a gun at me, I'd fucking freak out. Mm. I would actually shit my pants. And then like a long gun too. If someone fucking points a fucking shotgun from down the street at me, I, I shit my fucking pants. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's understandable. Just, it's because like you know, their fingers on the trigger, and at any moment they can let it rip. Like mm-hmm. a fucking Beyblade and just fucking destroy me. Mm-hmm. And that's just... Next question. <laughs> we got Spoon SK saying, What route do you guys think civilization will take with the growing rate of which new technology is researched and utilized? We've been over this. Like We maybe, talk about this just on the regular. Yeah, right? four Sorry, or five I need times. to read that. I have no idea what you just said. Porn's going to get crazy. Um, Porn, I mean, wild, sex robots, wild, artificial wombs, grow baby in tubes. We got uh, gen- genetic uh, alteration in the womb. Uh, we got CRISPR yeah, technology curing the, cancer. But also we talked about once like the uh, idea of customizing your appearance becoming yeah. easier and easier and plastic surgery becoming more common and things like that. And uh, genetic like uh, designer babies, that yep. sort of shit. Do you imagine I, like lying down and it was like a, a skin 3D printer? So it like takes all your skin and away and then like prints muscle on you and prints skin on you. That'd be crazy. Have you ever seen the movie Logan's Run? No. Really, really good cult classic sci-fi 80s movie. Yeah. Right, it might, might have even been late 70s. Really, really, really good. It was basically the uh, the concept was it was this civilization that was basically in these giant geodesic domes uh, and you know, all these different sectors. They all had crystals on, I think it was their left or the right palm. And it was, and basically like it would be a color based around like your age. Mm-hmm. And whenever it would blink red, uh, that meant that your time was up and then you had to do this like cult-like ceremony where you ascend and then and then die. So that way the, the colony keeps like a constant like state of, you know, like balance. So people were randomly chosen. It was like this whole religion and there are these people that enforce it. So people that have it blink, they would try to escape and, and run. And one of the guys who's uh, like an enforcer, you know, tracks them down and, and, and kills them, his starts to blink. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's like, no, this must be a mistake. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not even 30 yet. Like, they had to die at 30. And, uh, you know, his partner is the one that starts hunting him because he runs. And mm. it's this whole fucking thing. I feel like I've seen a parody of that. And But, yeah, he goes to, uh, he, he, one of the things was that he tried going to a sector where there was a plastic surgeon. Uh, but it was like you could literally reconstruct your entire face to hide. And I think uh, he was in like the middle of doing that, but then fucking something happened. You should watch it. Have you guys seen In Time? Mm -mm. Has seen what, sir? In Time. No. It's a Justin Timberlake movie. Well, he's like the main character. I think it's Justin Timberlake. But uh, Mm. the concept of the movie is uh, like the world is like overpopulated. Uh Um, Mm. So instead of getting money as payment, everyone gets uh, time. I know about this one. So like you on on their wrist, they all have, uh, you know, like, Zero years, zero yeah. day, weeks. What's the call, sir? In time. In time. A bit, uh, so, and they can like exchange money by holding each other's wrists and twisting, mm. and that like transfers yeah. time over to them. I have seen that. Yeah, and that's the, a crazy concept. That was an all right film, actually. I, I yeah. Mean. So like, what happens in the movie is it's a, like this is at the start. It's not spoiling anything, but at the start of the movie, uh, this guy goes out. He, he goes out drinking. He's like on a day to day job, like literally day to day. Like he gets a day paid every day. Yeah. Um, so Mm. he, you know, he has no time extra, uh, and he's out drinking and all of a sudden he comes across this guy who's just buying everyone drinks 
and he's like, you know, this you shouldn't be you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be throwing around money like this. You should be in the higher class places. You know, someone will kill you for that kind of time. And um, someone does try to kill him, and Justin Timberlake's character saves him, like, and calls him an idiot, and you know, hides him out for a, for a day. And then he wakes up in the morning, and the guy is dead, and Justin Timberlake all of a sudden has all of his time because right. he, he was just like. Because the guy didn't want it anymore. He so was he's tired effectively rich in this time yeah. currency. Yeah, and like they have different, they call them time zones, uh, but it's basically hmm. different sectors for different amounts of wealth and you pay, right. you know. But it's a really interesting concept and it's Super a cool movie. I'd recommend it. I reckon you'd like it a we lot. You should watch it. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, uh, it makes me think of Looper for some reason. Remember, you see that movie? I can't remember shit about it and I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, no, but like, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's all there's, kinds of crazy shit. You yeah. never know, man. The next 10 to 20 years is going to be pretty nuts. I mean, we'll have colonies down the moon probably by mid 2030s, functioning colonies mm. with, you know, ships going back and forth. Probably have a base so that we can go off from the moon to Mars, all that shit. I'm just very curious to see what the climate's like by that point. You know what I mean? Probably be hot. Hot as fuck. I reckon, I, right? Yeah. Like, dangerously so. I don't yeah. know. I a lot mean, more fires, maybe. probably. Hurricanes. We'll, we'll probably be able to take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Uh, Bill Gates, I think, invested a lot of money into this startup that basically uh, processes CO2 from the atmosphere and then it, sto- it makes, it pretty much stores it in pellets, carbon pellets, and then they put it underground or make uh, fertilizer or, uh, or, or like, uh, it's, it's almost like a protein powder out of it. Oh, and yeah. uh, well? I think I think it might might be for like animal feed or something like that. But they're you know they're pretty much taking all this excess carbon, which you know is the fucking greenhouse gas or whatever, and mm. then you know putting it back into the ground where it belongs because you know we're taking it from the ground yeah. in the form of oil, putting it in the atmosphere. So do the reverse and it's fine. Mm. But yeah, so you know maybe you know maybe that'll Hopefully, work. Hopefully, like things People, just do a one eighty and. People are trying to make robots that mimic uh, uh, photosynthesis and all that shit. So you have all these artificial trees everywhere. You know, panels that are literally taking CO2 out and producing Oh my God, oxygen. it's going to be like the Lorax. Just imagine giant yeah. cities with panels on the side that take in the light, produce energy and uh, oxygen, and just take CO2. It's so crazy how the future of humanity is so dependent on so many people taking responsible career paths and doing like literally the fucking God's work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like gender studies. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, No, but people like genuinely like, like hyper intelligent, like motivated people who are like starting to make the world a better place are so important to the future. But also like everyone else is super important to the future as well. Like people, people like us who make jokes and do a podcast are probably play a small part in like the, you know, overall bigger picture of humanity as well because you can't mm. it, not everyone can be a fucking scientist and uh, save the planet no but some people can get you know can tell jokes and make light of things and that's important too and there's yeah. also all the people who work regular jobs which keep things going as well like the entire global economy is just so fucking complicated and there's so many like important layers so many little layers of dependency mm. yeah it's exactly. like an ogre it's it's an ecosystem, man. It's crazy. Mm, mm. Anyway, this has been the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to end? Uh, yeah. What time is it? Uh, it's, I don't know. It's been over an hour. All right. Uh, yeah, sure. We can end. Um, cool. Peace out, guys. Thank you very Peace much. Peace out, guys. Bye. <laughs> Later, boys. Later. Hopefully you had a good experience. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye.